on this episode, my buddy Aaron comes to talk about his book and really some of the most fascinating shit I think about daily. Hey everybody, this is Gary Vaynerchuk and this is episode 306 of the Ask Gary V Show. Uh, and I'm very excited because I have a friend of mine for a long time in tech space, kind of OG for me, Aaron Digman. I'm gonna allow him to uh, introduce himself and then we will talk some talk. We will take your calls. So uh, Facebook, put in your numbers. Andy K will grab your, uh, will grab your numbers. We'll do some Q&A. Uh, we'll talk about his new book. And uh, I'm sure I'll take us somewhere super random as well. So Aaron, <laughs> why don't you say hello to Vayner Nation, tell them what you're about. All right, what's up Vayner Nation? Uh, happy to be here. My name's Aaron Dignan. Uh, I think of myself a little bit like a bureaucracy exorcist. I kind of go into <laughs> uh, big bureaucracies around the world, companies you've heard of that are a little frustrated with how siloed and hierarchical and inhuman work has become. And I try to shake that shit up. And, and how have you done that through your career? Obviously we met when you had an agency, now you're a human, you might have an agency, like update me. Like uh, that has always been something you've been great at. And obviously, you know, I, you know, Vayner Media in a lot of ways does that as well. For a little sure. bit more kind of like, you know, in the package of like a classic agency more than consulting or like energy, but like we clearly share a religion. Oh yeah. Uh, on this matter, which is why you're sitting here. Um, how are you doing that currently as a, as a solo nomad, yeah, as a no, company. no, we have a we have a company called The Ready that has people in fifteen cities around the world embedded in these companies. I mean, um, everything from big financial firms to you know medical systems to consumer brands. And are you constantly vetting people that you can train up or have it so that the next time another company wants to do something, you've got that kind of ninja? Yeah, but I mean, basically, what we've been trying to figure out is what can be uh, consistent, what's common across the way all companies are are getting in their own way. And then what needs like a special touch and then finding, yeah, finding those ninjas, those people in, in each community. And when did that company start? Four? Uh, 2015. Yeah, four so, years. So yeah, it's about four years yeah. ago. Yeah. And, and before that it was Undercurrent. Yeah. So, I mean, I just, for me, it's been a chain of- And what like, about before Undercurrent? Before Undercurrent, it was brand play. So it's always been agency space. It's always yep. been trying to help. And for me, it's just been like following one question to the next question. So the first question was like, why are, why are brands creating these emotional reactions in people? Why do people like- do irrational shit for brands. Yes. Then that question became, oh, I noticed a lot of technology brands are changing the world. Yeah. They're changing it more than anybody else. What's that about? So then Undercurrent was all about yep. the digital disruption. And then the How question- How big did Undercurrent get in headcount? I mean, we were doing you know, 10, 11 million dollars a year with 30 or 40 people. Real company. Yeah, it was real. I mean, it, was, yeah. you know, it wasn't huge, but it was, no, it was, it was a nice boutique And business. it was like a super like, respected firm. It, when very I started high Vayner, bar. it was like, ooh. Very high quality bar, When yeah, did you guys which, start that? That was 07. Who started that? You and yeah, me and two other guys, yeah. Rob Shuham, Josh Spear. Yep. Um, back in the day, so yeah, that was that was the next question. And then after doing all that digital stuff for eight years, it was like, oh wait a second, new question: Why is it so hard for companies to change? <laughs> Isn't the digital that's the problem? It's that they just can't metabolize what's happening in the world. How much is short-term financial religion at the core of all this? I think it's a lot of it in terms of just like constraints, like just the one economic smart, yeah. operating system. Just as one smart man who like has been <laughs> in it. If you, you know, this is like arbitrary, of course, but yeah. out of 100% of the energy of the problem for big companies, how much of it is they give so much fucks about financial health every 90 yeah, days? Yeah, the quarter and, yeah. and, and the short Just term trade-off. Just give me a 50%. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. Which which is you know good and bad, right? The good news is that means there's fifty percent we can do something about. That's right. Just like that. That's right. And the, and the bad news is that means we have an economic operating system that needs a little adjusting. So if you're yeah. running a business or you're within a big business, might be a right time to call. Put, put in your phone numbers on Facebook. We'll be getting to that in a little bit. So let's talk about the book. Yeah. What is it? When did it come out? How's it doing? The book is called Brave New Work. Brave uh, New Work. Yeah, which is kind of a so play for everybody who's old... watching that should rush to Amazon or other places. <laughs> why would who's the right person to buy this? Yeah, I mean, I wrote it for literally anyone that either leads a team or is planning to do so. Right. So if you're either if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a solopreneur, you're going to build a company. Get ahead of this because otherwise it's going to catch you down the road. It's a way to like maybe never become a bureaucracy. Right. Become something more adaptive and human. What's from the, the definition of bureaucracy? Like like, I, like yeah, yeah yeah you know uh, here's what I talk about it like so bureaucracy basically just means people in positions where the position has power and there's rule of law. So like it's not a big deal. Okay. But what it means when it goes bad is I, I like to call it organizational debt, right? So you got financial debt, you owe money, you owe interest on that. You got technical debt, you write software shitty in the beginning to get it out the door and then you have to correct it later. 
org debt to me is like any policy or process or structure or set of people in the company that are no longer serving it, but we haven't refactored. We haven't changed it up. We oh haven't God, fixed it. You know what I mean? So, so there's, there's a story in the book that I love where like the CEO <laughs> takes over a manufacturer in Europe, goes on the floor, walks around, sees a guy with a pair of gloves and a pink slip by a cage of equipment. He's like, what's going on? I'm waiting to get my new gloves. Well, how does that work? Well, when anyone on the floor needs new gloves, they have to show them to their manager, prove that they're bad, get a slip, shut down their machine, go over to this cage, lock and key, turn it into the guy. He goes in the back, he gets the gloves, brings them back. Then you go back to your machine and start it up. CEO's like, huh, how much are the gloves? Five euro. Gets his CFO. Hey, dude, how much does it cost for this guy to shut his machine down for 30 minutes to wait for these gloves? Thousands of euros. So essentially to save I don't theft, even want to get into this. Right? I'm about to go into such a crazy... I, <laughs> honestly, I don't... I basically want to blow up VaynerMedia totally. every day yeah, because of shit right, like this. Right, exactly, because it creeps in. People make decisions on short term. Even in my own company where I'm the dictator, yeah, yeah. there's like 74 things that are running through my mind right now <laughs> because we have a thousand people. Right, right. Because we're in all it's these places. Math, yeah. But it's like, it makes me want to fight. Yeah, totally, totally. And it creeps in. I mean, look at your kitchen drawer. Look at your garage, right? Shit builds up. You know how I think about marketing a lot? Uh, <laughs> I don't want to put my dad on blast, but I'm going, and I don't do it ever, but I'm not that I'm going to, but like emotional stuff is interesting to me. Right. Emotional decisions within businesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love giving away stuff for free. Right. People oh. don't, bless you. To me, people don't understand that you spend money marketing. Mm -hmm. Like when you spend money marketing, there's like eight bucks to like get somebody to come on your website. Totally. But you're okay with that, but you're unemotional by giving them a five dollar item for yeah, free. They can't have that. That would be crazy, right? Right? Like, 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 and I'm always like, but they're like, it's crazy how many people make a decision based on the five dollar glove yeah. versus the thirty thousand dollars. Because we zoom right in instead That's of right. looking at the big picture. That's and right. So then, and especially in these businesses where everybody has a function. But what about the real cancer, in? which is people yeah. get into positions and then they want to build moats around them because right. they don't want their employees to take their spot because their ambition was only to be at this level right, right, and right. this so salary. And then they have to protect it. That to me is like. It's super toxic, yeah, yeah. And part of it is just the way we structure businesses, right? So when you start a business, you got 10 people around the table, you have all the skills to get the job done. As you grow, you're like, oh, wait a second, you three marketers look the same, you go sit over there, and I have this little marketing fiefdom, and they're like, we're gonna grow and take, no one yeah, can ever change Yeah, fuck those guys us. over there. And it becomes this yeah. like whole you know, game Even of Even football teams with offense, defense, and special teams. Totally. Three things, yeah. crazy subcultures. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's Game of Thrones everywhere. And so one of the things we noticed in the book is, we went out and researched these companies that are like super adaptive, super fast growth, et cetera. They all organize where it's multidisciplinary. So it's never, you know, you never have offense and defense. Podcast, vlog, uh, Facebook. A lot of you have watched me. I've had a lot of my friends with different books. And, and I say friends because I will not put any author here to, that I don't respect, know. Like, I don't like it. <laughs> I'm not Oprah. Like, I'm not, you know, like, uh, I genuinely, I, I'm just feeling it right now. I don't know what else to tell you. I'm jumping in right now. This is probably the book I most want you to buy. I just have a feeling that a lot of what attracts you to me, especially for people that, listen, if you don't read books like me, don't buy it. But like if you're somebody who learns from reading a book, I have a funny feeling this, is, this book, if he did a good job, because we're <laughs> definitely in the same religion, is gonna synthesize in book form a lot of what I give a shit about. That was my goal. It's very and possible that I could have written this book at some point in my career, because I believe in this shit. Totally, and for me, the, the, the roles to play are like, you're getting people off the bench a lot with what you're talking about get in the game, do something. Me? Yeah. Publicly, but what's really cool, and like these guys, Andy especially probably knows, yeah. is I have a thousand, I'm, I'm the CEO and COO of VaynerMedia. Totally. We have a thousand employees. Yeah. This is what I do all day. Totally. <laughs> yeah, you live you in know, that. What I'm very good at is what I just did in Long Island City with Jason, which yeah. I, I had seven minutes, I went on Instagram Live, I brought somebody on the phone, <laughs> we did a piece of video, and it like is gonna kill and sure. get people off the, th but what I really do for Where a living, you live. Yeah. what I actually do is this. Is every, is totally, this. yeah, it's yeah. Like, Guys, we're better off just hiring that person mm -hmm. than debating it and then firing them and giving them severance because we're wasting the money up front in the process of hiring. Totally. That's why I hire super fast. Yeah. It's cheaper. Right. Hire fast. Oh, Dustin's an idiot? Oh, you want to be a good person because he fucking moved to here? <laughs> Get him three months severance. Yeah, yeah. Still faster than yeah. having Andy interview him 17 times. The fuck? Right. The speed of decisions so important. Dude, and you want to talk about somebody who loves speed of decisions? I'm looking at it. You are fucking looking <laughs> at it. But my machine does not. Right. Because everyone likes to do school. 
Right. School is fucking good. Yep. Let me do this Scantron. Mm-hmm. Here, you know how I did Scantron tests in high school? B C B A C B A C B B. Just random it out. Now, this is what I got for it. Uh huh. Yeah. But I it love took it. me thirty seconds to do tests in high school. <laughs> B B C A B A B C B A B A C B. Yeah. Thirty three. Yeah. Cool. Failed all classes, but not really. They'll give you a D, push you through. I'm on my life. Well, and in real life, you don't. You know, there's no way to know the right answer to you. Psst, do something. Real quick. I'm sorry, kids in high school that hate life. News alert. You never have to open your book. I didn't. You never have to do homework. I never did. No book reports. I never did one. You can fail every test. I did. Yeah. And they'll still push you through the system. And guess what? Here's another guy right here that didn't graduate college. Love you. But I feel Three like you're much smart. Three much, credits yeah, yeah, shy. Three Yeah, you did that because you're an entrepreneur. Like, you, well, Were yeah, you a good a, student? No. You were terrible? Well, no. Not I, as terrible? I, you I, saw that. That was nasty. Not that terrible. Yeah. I was I, I basically whatever I have to do so I could focus on my real work. I would do that. So if that mm-hmm. meant I got an A, I got an A. If I got a B, I got a B. If I got a C, I got a C. What's the best email you've gotten? About how long has the book been out? Uh, it's been out six weeks now. Awesome. What was yeah. the best email you've gotten so far? I or mean, DM I, or like, yeah. what, if one pops to your mind, like somebody. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I got a note from uh, from somebody at a company that we've both heard of that's like in this big innovation division, and he was like. Everything I've been trying to put my finger on, this has been like, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. It's now requiring re- required reading for the whole division. There's you. like 600 people reading has it. The They're book, changing it up. You know, Jab, 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 Right Hook yeah. probably was the book that was the most lead gen for VaynerMedia that yeah, I've yeah, ever yeah. written in my life. Yeah. Has the book become a lead gen for the business oh, yet? Oh, totally, yeah. Love What's it. super cool about it is I, I didn't expect this because my last book was like a pet project. The peop- CEOs are reading this book. This CEO of like a 20,000 person realty firm read the book cover to cover and was like, Let's flip the table over. I'm ready. Like Good for you. They're like, it used to take me a year no, no, of great. sitting down, like it's hand great. holding and like. Stroking. What about content? Podcast, putting out, like, what are you thinking about? Like, yeah, just yeah. knowing how thoughtful I think you I couldn't wait to, like, do this with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, have you been thinking about more content? Totally. Are you yeah. doing it? What's going on? Yeah, so we're going to, we're launching um, in, in just a few weeks, actually. We're launching a Brave New Work podcast. Good and the way you. we're going to do it is we're going to bring one business leader on, me and one of my partners in the firm. We're going to sit with them. They're going to t- talk about something that's driving them nuts, something right that's stuck in their teeth. Yep. We're going to make a plan. They're going to go try the experiment and they're going to come back six Great. weeks later and be like, here's what happened. Great. We blow, you know, just burn, burn it down. Uh, Facebook, put in your calls. We're about to do that part. I just want to give Aaron like maybe two, three minutes to talk about anything he wants about the book <laughs> or anything else. Yeah, yeah. What's the, what's the title of the book again? Brave New Work, Brave which you can New find work. at bravenewwork.com. Uh, believe BMW. it or not. Yeah. Which is funny, I Brave actually got a, I got a note from another author who, who's like a best-selling author and he's like, God damn it, Aaron, I wanted that title for my last book. The publisher said no. Is that true? So he was the guy that owned the dot-com before me. No. Yeah. Love. Yeah, which is kind of funny. Love. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the point of the book is this. The, you know, if you're starting something. It's 1.37 p.m. on the East Coast. If you've Go been ahead. in a business, if you've worked in a big business, if your spouse has, you know, the way we work is a freaking 100 years old. Everything else has changed. We, can, we have rockets that can land themselves but the org chart looks exactly the same as it did when your grandparents were entering the workforce. God, I hate so it is broken. We have to fix it. And now we're seeing with politics, with the environment, with for-profit companies, with inequality, like everything is starting to fall apart because yes. we haven't updated this yes, shit. Yes, I love it. So it's time to burn it down. It's time yes. to start again. Yes. And the book's invitation is basically like, given that, take ownership of your way of working. So it isolates these different areas. Structure, authority, you know, information flow. You know, it's funny. I'm sitting here and I'm like, yeah. I've been saying something quite a bit. Would love your hot take on this. Yeah, yeah. So we also have it structured the same way. Sure. A thousand people. Of course. But something I've said probably 25 times in the last two months that is absolutely resonating and is absolutely the truth mm-hmm. and I would love your take on this as a middle step yeah. for a lot of people I say VaynerMedia is at its best when Gary Vaynerchuk, the human, is an outside energy of the machine itself right. as a CEO. Right. And and that is what I spend my time on and, and there's a lot of good from that. When I'm not part of it, when I'm over here as a separate energy, mm-hmm. the CEO that's willing to break his machine right. often at the sadness and and curiosity of the most senior people within it <laughs> has made it dramatically more palpable. Thoughts? Totally, yeah. Look, we, we talk a lot about organizations as pyramids, but I like to think of them as circles. Yeah, me too. The outside is where we meet the market. That's where shit is happening. Well, that's it, for sure. <clears throat> most businesses, the CEO sits in the center. That's so right. they're in the center. They have no contact with reality. That's right. And so they're in here. They're getting messages that are three weeks old. They're sending instructions that are going to be three weeks old by the time they get you know, heard. It's a game of telephone in both directions, so nothing's really accurate. 
the idea of having someone who's a founder, who's an energy bringer, who's a visioner out at the edge is the whole point, right? Like that's where reality is happening. The rest of the system should be self-sufficient. If you build a business that can't run itself at 50 people, 100 people, 1,000 people, you have work to do. Like it should be able to run itself. Let's go. That makes a ton of sense. What else? Give me some two more hot takes while Andy's <laughs> dialing. What, I mean, the, what's the, another theme from the book? Or yeah, stuff no, the that stuff, stuff. The stuff that I saw when I went out and talked to these companies, they're you know the world's largest tomato processor. Everybody writes their own job description. Everybody sets their own salary. You talk to MBAs at Harvard, they're like, "No way could we ever do that." Guys that tick, pick tomatoes can, and they are ten x more profitable than their competition. They're the world's largest tomato processor. You know, hundreds I of millions of dollars, that. and it's just like th- there were stories like that oh, everywhere I looked. Who's this? Hurston, it's Gary Vaynerchuk. You're on with Aaron. Yo, what's up, Gary? Life is good, bro. Man, um, <laughs> I, I've been watching your stuff for a while, and I uh, really appreciate the call. And uh, this actually really hits home with me. Expand. <laughs> Expand. Yeah, so um, so I'm in a unique position where I, I work inside of a bank. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it's one of those kind of infrastructures that's kind of built on legacy and history. And... Uh, I'm, I'm pr- fairly young into all the emerging tech stuff. I actually have an Oculus Go on my desk right now. Um, and so I'm really interested in expanding these well-established spaces. And so that's what my question was based off of. How do we do things like that from the inside? And then how do we convince people who may not see the full vision of what's out there to look at um, not just alternate ways of um, generating revenue, but also look at niche groups to help build business models. Totally, totally. You might have a crack at that. So we work with a lot of banks. And what's interesting about banks to me is there's a learned helplessness that happens in regulated industries where people that are used to having rules that are put upon them are like, oh, we can't do anything. And it's much easier to say no to everything when the answer to 10 questions, three of the 10 is no. So it becomes just no, 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 no. It's so much easier. It's, It's a lazy way of being present in the space. So the first thing we have to do is start to, you know, ask more about uh, about what could happen. So we al- we always teach uh, when we work with banks and, and big companies, we always teach them to ask what is safe to try. So is it safe to try this? Is it safe to try that? Would it be safe to try it for one day I did X, Y or Z? It changes the scope mm-hmm. from like, can I do this to tell me why this is unsafe? Because I don't think you even know. So that's one trick that we found that's really helpful. The other thing is we always ask teams, whether it's leadership teams or teams at the edge, one question to start the conversation. It doesn't start with bitching. It doesn't start with what's exciting. It starts with what's stopping us from doing the best work of our lives. Everybody has an answer to that question. You talk to a CEO, they'll be like, oh my God, let me, you know, where can I roll out the list? And just start with what that, what's on their mind. So if I have a boss, I'm like, what's, what do you think is stopping our team from doing the best work of our lives? And then they say, I'm going to start there. Because if I start there, I'm earning trust. I'm moving things forward. I'm breaking down some of, the, some of the walls. And then I can say, you know, what else I think it is, is number two, three, or four, right? So just start where people are at. I also think that eight out of 10 people should change jobs. For sure. For sure. And to, be, and to be honest, I've been here for a very brief time, so um, I'm, I'm definitely looking to have a pr- pretty profound impact on, on what it is that uh, we offer and what I'm, what I'm wanting to move forward with. So I greatly appreciate the advice. Um, I did just uh, grab the book. Yes. Um, so I'm very excited yes. to, to break into that. Oh, and Gary, uh, man, when you get a chance, come visit Kansas City, man, get some barbecue. We are not just flyover country, man. There's a lot of great <laughs> things going I'm on su- in this city. Dude, I'm super, on both dude, sides, I'm super aware. Both sides of the we, were, we were working with Hallmark at some point three years ago, and the two or three trips I took there, I enjoyed yeah, super tremendously. Fun. We're working with someone there too right now. So, I'm, a, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a big fan of KC. I, uh, I wisely decided to not go to the Jets-Chiefs game a couple years ago because <laughs> I didn't feel confident and the Chiefs beat the fucking piss out of us. Um, but... <laughs> Um, I definitely have a feeling that you know there's there's a classic Patrick Mahomes Sam Darnold night football game in the next half decade, and I'm gonna come and I'm gonna come strong. <laughs> awesome, come here for the entrepreneurship too, man. There's a lot going on in that space. I'm super I aware. I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you know this, but Big Omaha, um, which is in Nebraska, obviously, uh, was a conference mm-hmm. that kind of died nine years ago because of some cancellations. And Jeff Slavatsky and his partners drove to me in Iowa City because I was stuck at an airport. And I, just their sheer effort, I committed to giving the keynote at Big Omaha nice. 10 years ago. And, um, and I've been, I, where, where I'm going with that, because I think they also did a big Kansas or Kansas City or what have you. I, I've just been unbelievably aware of the entrepreneurial spirit 
in the quote unquote flyover states. <laughs> like, you're, you know, listen, I built one of the largest and if not the most impactful wine retailer in American history in New Jersey. <laughs> so you're not talking to, you're not talking to a, you know, a, a East West Coast snob. I couldn't be a bigger buyer of entrepreneurship. And I'll be very frank with you. I actually think entrepreneurship's in a very tricky spot right now because there's so much fake entrepreneurship That's and right. there's a hell of a lot more fake entrepreneurship on the left than the right. I think some of the most practical entrepreneurship is in the middle. Unfortunately, they look to the left and right and they're picking on. up a lot of those bad behaviors, but I do not sleep on Kansas City entrepreneurs. I just hate the Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand that. Thank you, gentlemen, you both, for your time. I greatly Later. appreciate the call. I especially, thank you, brother. I especially hate the Chiefs for not beating the Patriots when they should have. No kidding. Last year, which is really pissing me off. It's funny you talk about startups. What, one of the stats I got for the book that blew my mind is every year there's an entry rate and an exit rate for startups. How many come in? How many come out? Okay. The exit rate crossed the entry rate for the first time in like two decades recently. Good. Like, we're, no, bad. No, no, good for me. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because I'm so tired of fake entrepreneurship. Right, right, right. We're, that means we're in the beginning stages of, of the great cleanse. Yeah, the re, yeah, the, re, the reset. And by the way, I don't say that as audacious entrepreneur that doesn't want competition. I feel bad for people who are taking emotional losses. Oh, sure. Who were never meant to be yeah, entre- who, weren't in- who weren't meant to be entrepreneurs. Right. They thought that was no different than kids that went to college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The current system we're in is the beginning stages of what fucked up college. Not everybody needs to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> Not everybody needs to be anything. Period. Who's this? BJ. BJ, it's Gary and Aaron. Hey, how's it going, Gary? Good. I'm actually super nervous talking to you, but uh, Don't worry. super excited. You're nervous or something? Well, good. Um, you look BJ, great. First, say hello to Aaron, and then tell us where you're from. Oh, hey, how's it going, Aaron? Um, I actually love you, brother. You are like one of the most influential people. I've been watching you for years. Um, I'm out here in Kansas, brother. Nice. You're right in on. Kansas. Yep. That's crazy. I love what's going on. Go ahead. Um, I have a, I have two things for you. Um, first one's a question. Um, I'm running a branding company. I run a hot rod shop and uh, we build cars. We do videography for companies um, showing off their products and stuff like that. Um, if you don't believe in a product, um, should you brand them? Is that a company that you would walk away from? That's a great question. Or is that walking away from money? I feel like That's I'm selling out question. if I was to stay with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I got one answer, Gary. We have a different one. The way we handle this at the ready is if we can't find enough people to build a team that believe in the mission of that company, we don't take it. So we've had this happen in the last year. A company comes in and they work in a space we're uncomfortable about. We're like, show of hands, who wants it? If nobody what, wants it, we don't do it. When you say you don't believe in it, you think the product sucks, you don't like the founder, you don't you like it's the unethical. ethics, uh, thank yeah. you. Where are you going? Like, I don't like the product itself. Well, good. I would then take the business because your subjective opinion on a product Doesn't has nothing to do the with the market's yeah. opinion on the product. I don't like anything. Yeah. And also, fix it. Like, make, you know, give yeah, me some and, insight. And I think as a marketer, you're just exposing that product quicker to more people. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I'm fixing it. I think I'm making more people aware of things. Right. My big thing is I don't like anything. Right. But that feedback okay. might fix it, right? Do you Give see where I'm more... going? Like, you don't believe in the product, how? Like, your <laughs> audacious opinion. Yeah. Like, like, if you're too pr- picky about products, like, you know, like, you, I think you have to be thoughtful here, right? You, the human, versus you, the operator, is a very important call. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. like, you don't like the taste of that beer? Like, well, no, it's like being an I'm, an, I'm an expert in the field of hot rodding, you know what I mean? It's a product you put on a car and it doesn't perform like it says. You know what I mean? And there's other products on the market that perform better. And would I rather work with that company or work with the one that has the inferior product? Mm. That's a different question. So I would say that's different. Like to me, I have no problem marketing Pepsi because I'm not ideological about a sugar ep- epidemic. Right, right, right. right? Um, and, but the product works. It is like what it is. Yeah, if you're yeah, saying yeah. to me that there's products in your space that are like, like over or lying or over embellishing the Snake value pro- the value proposition that is yeah. different i would yeah. that, that is different now you need to make sure that you're not getting a little too experty let me explain <laughs> there's a lot of wines out there that say one of the best white wines in the world where i'm like no it's not right. but then that's my expert opinion versus the masses is this math or opinion right i think it's a little both okay Anytime it goes into math, then I'm like, cool, get out. Anytime it's opinion, because you're an expert, 
I, I say humble yourself and attack. I got you. I got you. So that, that's where I go with it. You know what I mean? And, okay. we've, and we've passed on a lot of things at Vayner for that reason. We've not, you know, as I like to say yes to everything, but there are absolutely moral or concerns. There's entire business concepts that I'm just uncomfortable not with. with it. So the question I always ask myself is if I make this bigger, does that make the world worse? Because yeah. if it does, it's like, oh, And honestly, maybe. I'm a little, that's a great thing. And, I, and I'll just tell you mine. My big thing on that one is, I mean, people debate everything. I yeah, mean, yeah. there was a video I put out yesterday that's like helping so many people and like three people are mad at me because there's, a, there's four plastic bottles of water. Right, and they're like, And oh, I was sitting yeah. there and I was, this is what I think about. Like last night, there's like four different comments out of the 4,000, this has changed my life. And then there's four of like, hey, water motherfucker. Bottles. Yeah, yeah. Like, can you get some fucking you know water bottle like uh, right. you know tin water bottles and I'm like oof, like <laughs> you know like where do I want to take this? Right. Like, do am I a human today that believes water in plastic bottle form is massively detrimental to the world? Right. There are absolutely people that think that's the case. Right. And there are absolutely people that. But don't. you got to pick your priorities. I think that's right, and I think we all get to pick. And so you, as an expert in hot rod, you get to pick, not me, not Aaron. Uh, I think it's absolutely, I think everybody should walk away from certain business based on their moral compass and opportunity costs. Awesome. Um, I have one last thing for you if Sneak you got time in. for just a second. <laughs> Sneak it in. Um, I w- I'm building a hot rod right now for one of the biggest shows in the world. I want to help you sell empathy wines. Um, all I want is some empty wine bottles and your permission to put it on the side of the vehicle. That is super done, and I'm not even going to send them to you empty. I'm going to send them to you full. <laughs> you drink them. Because I'm very grateful for the opportunity. So send me an email, Gary at VaynerMedia, and say you're the Hot Rod Kansas guy, uh, and I will get that in motion. Awesome. Thank you so much. I've got some really killer guys on the crew. You won't regret it, sir. Thank nice. you. No, thank you, my friend. I just got my, my empathy. It's awesome. Thank just you, man. Got it. Yeah, thank we're you. Psyched. What do we want to end with? What uh, is uh, what we've covered here? Where, where, what? Did, what's the white space within this framework we haven't touched on? I think it's just how to get started. We'll sneak one more in if you got it. Yeah, if you got one more, how to get started, right? So everyone always asks me. I do the big talk. I get them all excited, and they're like, "Yeah, but how the hell do I get started?" I'm like, just pick one tension, one thing that's driving you nuts at work. Go look and figure out who's doing it differently. Pick one alternative way to do it, and then go Aaron, try the Aaron, experiment. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. It's interesting that I'm CEO and COO of uh-huh, Vayner. Uh huh. But as you were just talking. I'm like, that's why I'm able to do, fix so much here. Right. Because, right. I, because I've had AJ as COO, in. I have a James Orsini as COO, right. and now I'm like, you know, I've always had a factor of their feelings, their thoughts, their mm-hmm. perspectives, mm-hmm. which would slow down even what I want to do. Sure. Um, have you, any thoughts on that CEO, COO concept? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we just worked with a, a nonprofit that was thinking about, oh, you know, the C, CEO wants to go be the, the kind of outside. Yeah, you know, and the COO. In, in, you know, improvisational person and person making everybody excited. And should we hire another CEO? And I was like, take a beat before you do that. You bring in some other blood. You don't know what they're going to want to do. Just blow the roles apart. So like, what is a CEO? A CEO is not actually a thing. A CEO is a marketer and a mentor and a fundraiser and a this and a that and the other. Blow all those roles out and then tell me which ones Allocate. do you want? Yeah. You, know, you want these eight? Take those eight. Love you founded the company. Yeah. Don't hold roles you don't want to hold. I think CEOs should do more of what they're great at and yes. less of what they're not. And that's why the title gets in the way sometimes. So it's like Couldn't CEO, COO, I don't Couldn't care. What roles Hello. do you want to play? Who's this? Michael, it's Gary Vaynerchuk. You're on with Aaron Diggin. Dignan. Hey, Gary <laughs> V in New Jersey. In the house here. All Where, right. brother? I'm in Ridgewood, New Jersey. Know it well. Please say hello to Aaron. Hello, Aaron. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. What's your What's question? Up? Uh, hey, Gary. I I have um, I've been I've been an entrepreneur, if you want to say. Some days I've been a entrepreneur. Yep. And I feel I feel a bit of a pivot coming on because, you know, I'm I'm older. I mean, I'm 59, but I've been I, I've been mainly around tech. And what's what's a hot take for somebody who like I feel like I have a lot of skills, but I don't necessarily know which one to focus in on next. You know, I can make my, my living in real estate these days. Well, what makes you happiest? But, uh, yeah, what gets you fired well, up? I gotta, yeah, I, I got to say, you know, uh, once again, I, I feel like I want to go back to my, my tech roots and help people out. Versus as, a, as, a, being, as a service provider? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I got out of coding you know, years ago because kids were doing it better than I was. Makes sense. You know? That's why you know, Kobe I'm, retired. I'm a good... Yeah, I'm a, I'm like a that, good By the way, I love that. <laughs> but do you love it so much that it's like, fuck it, and you want to like get back in the grind and get back in the quote-unquote gym? 
Yeah, I I got to say that I I think that I am a better interpreter of tech from people who do it well but don't, you know, hook up with humans as well versus humans who don't understand tech. I kind of I'm stuck in the middle. I'm more like an analyst than I was a programmer. I still See, feel that way. I, I would not dwell in the, you know, is it this skill? Is it that skill? I would dwell on the problem. What's the problem you want to solve? Because if the problem you want to solve requires coding, then either you're going to have to do it or someone else is. If the problem you're solving requires coaching people, then you're going to have to do it. Or you're going to have to find someone to do it with. Like, I would just zero in on like, what's the, what's wrong with the world that I want to fix? And then let's figure out what skills are needed to do that by chasing it. But I would really spend more time worrying about what's broke. Is, well, um, let me ask you. I, I let me ask you a literal question. Like, are you asking, like, "Hey, I've got this real estate thing that's brewing, but what's your hot take on me starting a, a company around tech in some shape or form?" Um, yeah, I mean, I would say because I see people popping up all over the place who want to be, let's say, influencers, influencers, you know, on Instagram on a like a local level, you know, doing social and stuff like that. But, um, you know, the consistency and the quality and stuff like that, they just aren't there and they, they give up after a little bit. Okay. And I said, listen, man, I, I, can, I can help you. I mean, I go back mm. to the 84, you know, the slide deck of yours. And, you know, that's, that's like, if you want to say, you know, uh, the Bible. And so you know? do you want people to pay you to architect their tech advancements? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like, uh, I'll, I'll give you, Let me I'll g- give you my hints yeah, and go ahead. stuff, go ahead. but I'll, I'll, I'll walk the walk with you for a price. You know, I'll I let th- you do I on your own I, as much I, as you want. I think you should definitely do it. I don't, I don't think smart people view somebody 59 as not capable of helping them in tech. I think that there's a lot of people who will ageism you if that's the fear mm-hmm. in this conversation but there's a very easy way to fix that. Start Do putting out content. Yeah. <laughs> Start talking, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, show put out content. Tell. Like put out, like what you're, even hearing you now, I'm like, okay, this is good. Get more detailed in videos on Facebook. Speaking of Facebook, uh, you have a mug on your, on your Facebook page that you posted on May 12th, 2015. It's a Vermont cow mug. Do you still have it? <laughs> uh, I think so. I'll give you twenty five cents look. for it. <laughs> <laughs> but think about think I, I, about this carefully, feel Michael. Like 50, that means you can drive like fifty bucks here. What's that? <laughs> I kind of feel that's a fifty buck item and you, you want to pick my pocket. You're gonna appreciate this. It's probably an eleven to eighteen dollar item, but let's play real life. If you then drive to Vayner and get to meet me for five minutes, I would argue that you're stealing an opportunity by selling your Vermont cow <laughs> for mug for five cents. twenty-five cents. Hey, you want to know? So I just had I just had a a light bulb, like a thousand watt light bulb, go off. And what did that light bulb say? Uh, that light bulb is saying, "Damn, I got to find that mug." Correct, <laughs> because because what just happened was one of the most meta moments in podcast history. I did that with you, hoping that you would say that I was potentially ripping you off. Because I just used in real time the example that we started this podcast off with That's gloves right. in the cage. You hear it, me it, offer a quarter for something, your mind goes and says, not worth it. this is not worth it. It's probably worth 10 to $50. What you didn't say is you didn't level it up to the forest instead of the tree and say, I can go meet Gary V and pick his brain for five minutes by taking this quarter and that's probably worth 10,000 bucks. I, oh man. He's looking for the money. I, I, right I hear now. that you 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 upped me one. And, Thank and, you very much. And that's Killer. and that's why it's super fun. So take me up on that. Find the mug and email me it, and we'll get you in here and say hello. I you should absolutely attack. Fifty nine year olds know how to do technology. Know know how to project manage, but put out the content. You're very articulate. I like the way you talk. Even like put out LinkedIn videos on your observations. You'll be stunned how much business you might be able to get in the two hundred one. Okay. You got it. Right on. Okay. How fucking rad. Like, did I just, was that amazing? Yeah, that really you guys were impressed. Aaron, that was good, right? It was a good dunk. I did a good job. Good dunk. Question of the day. You get to ask it. Yeah. We'll get, we'll get thousands of uh, answers, he, but you might be able to do some more research It's the question on I it. mentioned before. It's the question I ask every team in the world as far away as Manila. What's stopping you from doing the best work of your life? Love That's it. what I want to know. Aaron, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Now. You guys keep asking questions. We will continue to answer them. <laughs>